We're on the dock down here at Moss Landing with Dr. Chris Goldfinger from Oregon State University. Chris, would you mind taking a moment and telling us about our project coming up here? Yeah, sure, Dave. Uh, what we're doing is mapping the northern San Andreas Fault uh, from uh, Point Arena to Point Delgada. This, went, this is the fault that went off in the 1906 earthquake. And for whatever reason, it's really never been mapped. It's been mapped onshore, and it's been really uh, uh, and sort of enigmatic and difficult fault to work on because the, uh, the, uh, the part that's uh, along the San Francisco Peninsula is completely urbanized. It's difficult to work on, or it's underwater, one or the other. Uh -huh. And so we're working on the fault in a place where it's not urbanized, obviously, underwater, and, and uh, easier to get at, uh, except that we need a boat <laughs> and we need a lot of gear. So we can't, there's really no place that you can, not very many places where you can just walk up and put your finger on the fault. And so we're, we're going to map the fault with uh, subsurface seismic reflection profiles. So we'll, we're going to do about 120 of those every kilometer along the fault. And then we're going to map the surface of the fault with a multi-beam sonar. And so to do that, we're using the Derek Bayless to do both those uh, operations. And we built, built a sonar pole and various accoutrements to add uh, the seismic reflection to the ship. And then uh, we also have uh, an autonomous vehicle. So we've got an, an AUV, it's called, that'll be uh, uh, hovering near the bottom and running transects along and taking uh, photo mosaics of the fault and has a scanning sonar to do really super high-res uh, multi-beam of the fault. So later on in the winter, when we get all this data back, we'll, we'll try to put it all together and try to build the picture of the fault. Uh, but for the next uh, two and a half weeks or so, we're, we're just going to be collecting all this data uh, 24 hours a day until we until we've uh, got it all, hopefully. Outstanding. What what led you to choose to work with Sea Life Conservation and work aboard the Derek M. Bayless on this project? Well, I, th I think personally, uh, I, I've been looking for, I was sort of appalled on my first oceanographic cruise in 1989 to get on what amounts to, you know, a hummer of the seas. We have, uh, we, we uh, I'm, I'm sort of a, you know, environmentalist and all that. And we, uh, in oceanography, though, we use big, heavy steel vessels, typically, uh, that burn somewhere in the thousands of gallons of fuel a day. And I was really looking for uh, some way to, to do what we do and not leave such a heavy footprint. And so I, I, I knew Tom Wiley a little bit, and I'd heard of this boat, and I just called Dave Robinson out of the blue one day and said, hey, you know, can we try this? And uh, the, the Bayless is really perfect in a lot of ways. You know, the, the organization is uh, aligned with what we're trying to do, kind of reduce our fo footprint. The vessel is perfect. It's quiet and efficient. Uh, being Just being quiet alone helps our science quite a bit. And being efficient just makes it more cost-effective to do what we want to do. So even uh, even the non-environmentalists of, of us in the oceanographic community can, can realize that it's a big plus to just be able to be out there longer for, for essentially the same amount of money. So our, I, think, I think our missions are, are just about perfectly aligned, and I know Sea Life is, is uh, interested in having the boat used for, for science as much as possible, and so we're going to give this a try, and we're pretty sure it'll work. Well, that's really exciting, Chris. Thanks so much for giving us the opportunity to work with you and uh, for bringing your project aboard. Yeah, you bet, Dave. It's going to be fun. Yeah, Cheers.